my name is Katherine Hall and I work in temporary public art projects um, which is primarily because of my having used Brainerd as a mentor. I found Brainerd through the NIFA website and I was at a place where I was um, having ideas for large public projects, you know, very permanent work that would cost, you know, a million dollars and be made out of steel and concrete and all these things that there was no way I could even imagine making. Um, and I would come up with an idea, say for Socrates Sculpture Center, and send off a proposal and get rejected, and then never make the work. And I was doing, you know, this was like several years, you know, and making little drawings and feeling really frustrated and, um, I wasn't having any shows and I wasn't really making pieces I was happy with because I couldn't make anything big. Um, and I realized I need a mentor and I think I was just, either I did a Google search or I was just always searching the NIFA services every month, you know, for new shows to apply to and things like that and saw his posting um, and we talked and um, decided to work together. And the thing that he said to me that really made a shift was he said, Curators, uh, artists don't need curators, curators need artists. And I, and that sit around waiting to be given a show, you know, and doing all these like applications, hoping that some curator would see value in my sketch and think I was worthy of being given a show was not working, was not useful, and was completely irrelevant to my making art. Um, so then he said, why don't you brainstorm for two weeks, and or maybe it was just a week, and make a bunch of drawings. Just every, if you could do anything you wanted to do, what would you do? What would you make? And I started sketching and I came up with this um, sketch, or I, I think I made even a 3D paper model of a car with a big tube in it. And um, I sent him all these sketches and he said, you know, this is the one that just really makes me smile and laugh and I keep thinking about this one. Um, and I said, well, that, and he said, which of these ideas that you've come up with, I think I had a building with tubes too, seems like realistic that we should tackle and I said well the car he said yeah I think the car is a good one um, so I was still thinking of this that I was going to make this car with this tube as a sculpture and put it somewhere in a parking lot and photograph it and the photograph was going to be the thing you know or the uh, and then it was going to be gone and he was like you know you can park this in Soho and then you've got all these people on the weekend who can come see it and you know it's like thousands of people and you have this huge audience and you can park it all over the city. And I had just never thought of it as a performance or as of a moving project or as something that would be like on exhibit. I thought I was going to do this in a parking lot with nobody around and photograph it and then that was it. And it just totally opened my eyes that the work I was doing and wanted to do didn't have to be permanent and made out of um, glass and steel and concrete and cost a million dollars, that I could do it for $300, which I could come up with and do it all over the city. Um, so that was what we decided to do and then we came up with a list of you know um, how do you get a permit to do that you know and, and call the city and find out and I you know I called the city and nobody knew what to do with me and finally they said well if you're in a parking space and you're legally parked and the art piece is on the car then it has nothing to do with us we don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do what you want. And that's actually what I've discovered in New York is just do what you want and say that it's art and it's fine. Because um, the police are too busy. You know, they, they don't want to, as long as you're not hurting anything, they, they've got more important things to be worried about. So anyways, I, you know, I came up with a way to make it happen physically and um, did, you know, a plan and we came up with um, a laundry list of what task I needed to accomplish for it and just kind of knocked them off and I ended up doing this as a five month project all over the city um, and I learned how to do a press release actually through a um, free workshop with the Q Foundation on how to write a press release um, that just happened to come up right when it was time for me to learn how to write one and sent that out all over the place and ended up with um, Time Out New York calling me and I'd send it to their art desk but they'd send it to their weird things in New York desk and they came out and did a full page um, on the on the project and then a uh, national cable news channel, HDNet, um, came out and did a, a segment on it. So it was, you know, a huge success for me at that time and I finally felt like I was starting to do what I wanted to do and be able to achieve these projects. Um, and since then I'm now on my, I try and do one a year, I'm on my third large public project. And the one last year I ended up doing through the city um, with getting a city art permit. So each time I'm getting like 
a little bit bigger and a little bit more press, and that one was covered by the New York Times. Um, so it's just, you know, it's been really exciting, and it's also led to, through um, doing these projects, and I also go to the, I try and go to the NIFA, um, not every month, but a few times a year, NIFA brings in curators to meet with emerging artists and do portfolio reviews. So from there I met, um, because I had these public projects in my portfolio, I met um, someone, Astrid, Astrid Persons, from Powerhouse Projects, and after doing all the publicity for my last show, she asked to do an interview, so I did that online interview, which is still online. And um, it's just, you know, it just finally got me to rethink how I, uh, rethink my art making, and realize that if it's not working for you, you just need to change your model. You know, you don't, it doesn't mean it's never gonna work, and you know, you know give up. Um, so that's what I would, say that the important thing about having an art mentor is just it's, it's good to have someone outside yourself come help you brainstorm and realize what's holding you back.